Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is another raid Shadow Legends video. So I want to thank Eternal Limit for lending me his account. He has pulled a Fane. Pulled Fane early. Um, so we are going to mess around with Fane and see if she, it, that thing is all it is cracked up to be. Um, yeah, let's let's leave it there. So <laughs> basically. Fane was the champion that people were most interested to see other than the fusion and rightly so we saw the skill set she has got a chance to steal turn meter on an a1 two hitter brilliant for fire knight brilliant for spider all that type of good stuff she has got an attack um one enemy chance to place uh two poisons and a decrease attack debuff for two turns. Can book this up to 100%. You're thinking amazing. Amazing for any boss fight. Amazing for clan boss especially. Um, three turn cooldown here. So three turn cooldown on a decrease attack champion. Means that they can keep decrease attack up. For as long as you need it up. Two turns. Because the slam, the stun part of the mechanic for the clan boss. Does not need decrease attack on to reduce any damage. It doesn't do anything. So you can actually use her as your decrease attack champion for clan boss. Brilliant, we're saying. And then you've got a A3, which you can book to four turn cooldown. 100% chance of placing the big boy decrease defense, the big boy weaken, um, and to give her a heal. So triple hitter there, single hitter, double hitter. You're like, wow, fire knights, clan boss, spider, all of those good things dealt with. So we then see her stats. And pretty much completely deflate. Because the best spot for her was going to be clan boss. And with this base defense, you are not tanking any clan boss damage. She's actually at that point where she's not far off a flat defense chest and gloves being the same value to her as a percentage defense chest and gloves. That's how bad her defense is. Um, if you was able to put defense boots, gloves, and chest on her, and defense artifacts all the way across the board, you're still getting nowhere near that level of defense you need for Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss. Um, or you're scraping it. You are scraping it hard. It's the, it's the reason why Rowan is so weak on Clan Boss, because her defense is low. And Rowan's got 100 odd defense more than this, this uh, Fane. So, what does it mean? Uh, she's got a ton of attack. She's got very low base HP as well. She's got no survivability, guys. No survivability at all. So I think the only way she works on clan boss is if she is in an unkillable team. Basically. That's where that's what it boils down to. The best way it works on clan boss is if she's in an unkillable team with Vizier. Vizier, I don't know if we've got a Vizier on this account, actually. Um, I don't think we have. Oh yeah, we have. We have. Um, so Vizier and Fane together is OP. It's, it goes into that kind of busted combos, but only in an unkillable team. So don't get too excited is what I'm saying. Like she is not the best thing in this fusion in most cases. In most cases in this game, she's not going to be the best thing. What we're going to do first, uh, we're going to do a masteries. We're going to do a masteries for an unkillable setup. So remember, she's got a double hit on her A1. means you want to end on War Master. Um, and because we're going unkillable, we, and because we're running Vizier, we're actually going to ignore the support tree and we're going to go defense tree. So we're going to go crit rate into crit damage down the left-hand side here. She's going to get um, increased damage. No, sorry, wrong one. Increased damage when she's low health because we're running unkillable team. And we're going to make her heal in between. Um, the rest of these things are kind of irrelevant. On this side, we just want to go defense into um, reduce damage AOE. Doesn't really matter. All we're trying to do is get down to these two. So this is the masteries I would run on her. She can't steal turn meter from the clan boss, so that doesn't matter. It's not going to throw off your masteries, but this is the set I would use. Um, and let's get her into some content. So that's the masteries I'd run. Um, in terms of sets, so Eternal's already get her out for me at the right speed for his unkillable team so that's where we're going to start we're going to run her there um good amount of crit good amount of crit damage or an okay amount of crit damage accuracy to make sure he lands she lands all of her stuff 
and let's get her into Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss. Okay, so we're doing the slow man eater comp, double man eater. So the speeds that we're running at here are 218 on one man eater. We're running at 215 on the second man eater. He's our slow one. We're running at 182 on Fane, 177 on Vizier, and 174 on the Martyr. All of these three champions can be anyone. Occult Brawlers, Frozen Banshees, all that type of stuff. But this is to show off Fane. And I think this is probably her best space in the game. Um, with the slow Bob Man Eater, there's quite a lot of setup. And it is a little bit tricky. A little bit tricky. Um, but it means that you can run your champions way slower than you'd normally be able to do it. So turn one, we just go A2 Man Eater with the fast one. A2 with the, with the slow one as well. Everyone else, you can do whatever abilities you want. So, Fane, we're going to bring in here the poison. We're going to bring decrease attack in early just because it's going to go on anyway. And we have to stay alive until turn seven, which is a little bit of time. We get a bit of decrease, uh, a bit of extension there with Vizier. Get a counter attack up. Then the fast man eater on turn one. Let me just check this. We go block debuffs. Everyone gets their block debuffs up. A1 on the other man eater. So we get all our counters going in. Vizier, hopefully we'll get a couple of extensions here and there. There he goes. We now have to wait all the way till turn four for the slow man eater to get his um, his version of the un, um, the block debuffs and stuff. So here we go. Decrease defense and weaken on next with Fane. We keep extending those debuffs. Just get the other attacks going in. Uh, A1 on your fast one. A1 again. Don't put your block debuffs up again. A1 here. You're going to take a, a stun or a hit somewhere. It doesn't really matter where it goes. Um, now on turn count three, we're just kind of rolling in. Same abilities. We're still on the setup here. A1s. We're still vulnerable here. We're not unkillable yet. We're going to take a hit here, which we're not going to block. So you see, we're, un we're not unkillable at this stage. We're still doing the setup. More poisons rolling in here. A2 on the fast man eater. Vizier keeps extending. Now we do our unkillable on the slow man eater. Turn, uh, turn count four. Get our counters back up. And you see here, so far we've got what, six debuffs up? So there's a bit of setup to do, guys. It takes a while for, for Fane to get into a, into a stride with the amount of poisons you need, uh, which means that. You know, you question if she's better than Frozen Banshee, but you are getting your decreased defense and weaken, which is two brilliant debuffs for an unkillable. You know, we're only five turns in. You're going to have 50 turns of benefit from this decreased defense and weaken. So A1 here. I won't be on turn count five. I've got to wait until turn count seven for this next one. So we're going to block the, um, the stun here. Everyone's going to be unkillable. And we'll have blocked debuffs up. So we're not going to take a stun. Well, actually, she could have been stunned, but it didn't go that way. It doesn't matter anyway. Um, we're going to go for the A3 just because there's a triple hit. So we're going to get a bit more damage out. Now, on turn count six, we do not want to do his unkillable yet. So we're going to save that. He can't do his anyway. Uh, keep extending. All the time you can extend, the better. Don't forget, we're on the worst possible affinity here as well. So AoE goes out. We're now on to turn count seven. This is where the fast man eater, you don't want to do it yet. You want to do it on his second turn. First turn, you A1. Second turn, he's going to do his unkillable. More poisons out for Fane. One got resisted. It's a bit annoying. Especially if she's got like 300 accuracy. It's very annoying. But is what it is. What are we at? Three, six, seven, eight. Counter attack up. And then the fast man eater now does unkillable. At this point, we are totally unkillable for the rest of the fight so we've done the hard part we stayed alive uh, we're not full auto yet we're going to be full auto at the end of turn nine so there's a bit of setup here like four odd minutes worth of setups quite long but it does mean you can run a very easy to build team or a much easier to build team than a lot of the unkillables out there in terms of speeds so on turn count eight stun comes in turn count nine on the second hit of the slow man eaters, my slow bob over here. I'm not going to do it yet. Second hit of his um, his go, we're going to be rolling in with the unkillable. 
And at that point, I can hit auto. So I keep extending. Second hit here is unkillable. And bam, we're now completely unkillable for the fight. What I am going to do, just to make sure she does it, I don't know which, which one of these she's going to do an auto. So I'm going to make sure she places these poisons so that we get to 10 debuffs. And I'm just going to roll in with the Vizier extension here. Just to top that up a bit, that's nice. And now I can hit auto. Okay, so that's this is the team that I think she's best in. And this is the area of the game I think she's best in. I really, with those base stats, I would not play her in a standard comp. Um, we're going to try her in Fire Knights in a minute, which is the second area of the game that I think she's going to be strongest at. But it, I tell you what, the build is tough because you have to build her with such... You have to adjust your build because her base defense is so low. Normally with someone with attack like that, you want to throw in attack gear, uh, try and bump her crit rate up, try and bump her crit damage up, and really make the most of that kind of level of, of damage. But honestly, I think that we will struggle to make the most of that with such a low base defense. So I'll let this play through. We'll see what the damage is at the other end. Um, and then we can check her out somewhere else. Okay, guys, we're coming around to turn 46. So best news is we're here um, with a two key. We're Ultra Nightmare, two key in it. Uh, but we are running Vizier. We're running Marta. So, you know, this is about as good as it gets. Um, we kept the debuffs up for the whole time. Actually, one dropped off. One dropped off and we put a silly one on. So, um, yeah, that's that's this kind of this is the worst affinity for Vizier. That's that's why that happened. So we probably would be up an extra million or two uh, extra damage, maybe an extra million. We're going to come in at the end around forty mil, so comfortably a two key with this setup. Um, you know, is she the new Draco for clan boss unkillable teams? No, but she's she's actually very good. Um, the fact that she brings all those debuffs is strong. She does bring though decrease attack, which you don't really want with this setup because uh, it's a debuff feel that we don't really want on Unkillable. So, you know, we would have, with Frozen Banshee, for example, here we'd have two extra poisons up, or one poison, one poison sensitivity, which is a bit more damage, but you don't get the decreased defense and weaken. So, you know, it depends who you've got available. She's chalked up 22 mil, which is strong. It's strong, guys. Um, this is easily her best spot. This same comp as well, uh, for those who are unfamiliar with uh, Slow Man Eater comp, is exactly you can run this same comp in nightmare clan um clan boss which i'll show you the setup for it just because i've not done a video on it um but your slow man eater here who's running at um at the moment 215 you basically need to bring his speed down to 207 so i'm told let me just check what elite told me uh the pc swaps is just make sure i get this right um a crit rate set helm Crit damage helmet. Let's find it. So crit damage set helm. Oh, helm, not shield. So what I want to do is I basically need to lose eight speed. So one of these is going to say minus eight, and it's going to be the one we run. There it is, minus eight. See that? So equip this one. Takes our speed down to 207. And then basically we run a setup for Nightmare Clan Boss with the same team. So basically with three keys with the same setup, apart from spending 100 odd K um, swapping gear out, you run two sets of um, the most important chests in the game. Very cool setup, uh, especially considering the speeds are much lower than you'd normally run. Make sure you take the auto off though, because you don't want to be using your Ancient Bloods here. So the setup here is A2, A2. Very similar setup to what we've just done. Let's do our decrease defense and weaken. And start extending that. Get a counter attack up early here, obviously. From void this time. So this is going to be like true potential this comp. Um, turn one, the fast man eater does his block debuff. So the first turn we're coming up to after the counters, we go unkillable. And the other one just does an A1. And again, we're going to wait until turn count four for anything else. So you can kind of whiz this on. Keep extending. Keep the damage going in.
this is why man eaters are so high in my tier list for void um void pools because they just do such amount of work so we're just going to continue that through first stun will come in now we're not unkillable at all at this stage So we're going to take a stun. Doesn't really matter where it goes. Uh, turn count three. We just keep going with A1s. Keep extending it up. A2 here. Turn count three again. A2. Now we're on to turn count four. So this is when it needs to start to think. Uh, A1 for your fast man eater. Keep extending with Vizier. A uh, unkillable with your slow man eater on turn count four. Just get a counter attack up here. Next one's going to be turn count six. And it's, it's very similar to the nightmare setup. They're just the timing of it is slightly different. We just should have done triple hit there. Doesn't really matter. Uh, turn count five. We're just going A1 still. Keep extending with his ear. Now, turn count six. Again, the fast man eater. A1 for the first hit. We're going to A2 on the second hit. Get the triple hit in here. Nice. Look at all those Warmaster props. It's awesome. I don't know if that's bugged. The fact that she can hit three times Warmaster props there. I don't know if that's weird or not to be able to do that. Normally, you would need to use Giant Slayer to have three chances to get those Warmaster procs. It's like it counts it as three separate abilities. I don't know if that's normal or not. Message me below, guys. Is that something that you see often? Uh, fast Man Eater then into Unkillable. Now we're going to wait for turn count eight. We're fully Unkillable now. We, we, we can't die at this stage. You just need to stay alive till here. More poisons going up. Two, four, six, eight, nine debuffs on. And being extended. Counter-attack up. Get many hits in as we can. Especially because you want to get these extensions up. That's why counter-attack plus Vizier in this comp is, is about as good as it gets. And we're into turn count 8. We're going to get this unkillable back soon. So the slow man-eater uses that unkillable at the end of this turn. And that's when you can auto. So very cool. Two different clan bosses with pretty much the same setup. Here comes the unkillable. And then this one is auto. So I'll let this run through. I'll show you the damage on this one. And then we'll show her in other stuff. So again, guys, it's been full auto all the way. We've one keyed. Um, comfortably one keyed as well, I'd say here. So this has gone really well. Uh, again, we've got one debuff on that we don't really want for an unkillable setup. Being the decrease attack. But the rest of it has just gone nicely and we've got a ton of damage coming out. So we're going to end up doing just well, 48 million, which is way above what you need for the one key. And it shows this comp um, all together. Two keys Ultra Nightmare, one keys Nightmare, very simply, um, if you've got the right sort of setup. Fane doing 25 million of that damage, mainly because Vizier is extending those debuffs. So for this role, very cool. So this role very cool and in this type of comp very cool now if we didn't have vizier in there it would be considerably less damage let's bear that in mind yeah no vizier you're not getting those poisons out to stack all the way um but if you didn't have vizier and you were running um let's say a frozen banshee and um and faint together it's still good damage you're still going to do well so pretty cool setup um let's just change her up and take her into Fire Knights. I think the mastery still work. Uh, this is probably the sort of mastery you'd want to go with her. We could slam her into Helm Smasher and just see what this attack number is going to do. Um, I think I will do just kind of like a how hard is, does she hit type of showcase as well. Because I like to do that. Um, in fact, I will. I'll change her up. I'll get some damage on her. And then let's, let's try her out somewhere else. Okay, so we've changed her up. We've gone for savage gear with cruel gear so we ignore 30 percent defense with these two added together uh, which is nice we have gone just like high crit rate 
good crit damage, very high attack, accuracy is a little bit low. Um, but I'm just seeing how hard she hits here. So does she hit hard? Is she going to smack? Now, I didn't manage to change the masteries up. We've got no gems on this account, so I don't want to mess around with that. So let's just get her into Fire Knights and see if she's actually going to pound out some damage. I guess this gives us an indication of, you know, she's going to come in and be a, a kind of crazy, yeah, a crazy arena champion as well. So, you know, if she does good damage here against force champions, maybe she's going to come in and smack some force champions as well. So we're going to increase our attack. That's going to boost her damage. Just make sure they slow down a bit. Decrease the defense of the enemy. Um, I guess we're just going to provoke everyone. So we've got a choice here. Either go in with the A2, which is a single target, or a triple hit here. Let's try the triple hit first on Errol. What have we got per hit? 25, 40, 60. It's about 40k per hit. So 120k total. I tell you now, that's not it's not enough. For Savage plus Cruel Gear together, look, we didn't have Helm Smasher on, I get it. But for Savage plus Cruel together, 210 crit damage. Um with the sort of level of attack she's got. That's not enough for me to even consider her for Arena. Um, really for anywhere in the game. Like, she doesn't hit hard. Her multipliers are not good. Um, so let's just run this through till we get to the boss then. Um, and see on the boss if, you know, the utility she brings is going to be worthwhile. 100k on her A2. 110k. I mean, it's not weak. It's a bit like when I did the... Uh, Hexia guide, I guess. She's not weak. She hits hard. But I've also got her in crazy gear. Like, she should hit hard. She should she, she should be smacking with that gear on. Um, and she's not hitting soft. In fairness, she's not hitting soft. 30k. Probably like 70k worth of damage on her A1. It's good, actually. It is good. It is good. But the thing I'm worried about is like most of you guys are not going to have the gear that I'm I'm playing her in here, and you're probably not going to even gear her this way. So you know, attack percentage, boots, and chest is probably unlikely. But she does work. She does do some work. I think I'll once we've done this fight here, I'll change her back to more like a standard setup and just kind of test her out in a couple of other places. It's funny, I'm not, she's, she's good, but she's very delicate. You can't have anyone come after her. She's got the same sort of defense as a cold heart. So you have to make sure her HP goes up. So generally her build would not be like this. Generally I'd be running speed boots and generally I'd have her in an HP chest because that's the only way uh, you're going to keep all of the damage off her. If he swings at us here, she's going to die. But the additional hits that she does is nice. So, you know, Triple hits, double hits, that type of thing is all going to be good here. She does bring us some debuffs here if she gets them off. She's gotten resisted because I don't have her accuracy high enough. She's actually the good affinity here, which means she does take weak hits. And that's important because she's quite squishy. So actually that, that weak hit coming through there is pretty nice. Double hits there. It's all good. She's got a chance to steal turn meter. And drop turn meter. She's also obviously also got the chance to drop defense and, and weaken if you don't have like your Dracos coming in. So look, that's all good. I'm gonna change her up to make her more like a normal build, and then we'll see how this runs through again. I'll, I'll bring it back to the boss, but with a different setup. So I feel like this is a more realistic build that we'd be running. Um closer to 3k attack, 215 speed. You want it to go fast, get decreased defense out. 72 at crit rate, you'd want it to be hundred. 197 accuracy. So, and I've just kind of run a bit of a mishmash of gear. So let's run her back in, back through Fire Knights. Uh, we'll get to the boss and then we'll see what our utility is like on the boss. Um, I guess I'll just run the same team. I'll get to the boss and then we'll see what she's like. In fact, let's just see what she hits on the, the waves. So no decreased defense down that time. She does her A2 as a priority. That's interesting. I would prefer for waves certainly for her to do a, a three as a priority and get decreased defense and weaken out early um but it's interesting anyway a1's now doing 
or maybe that was that was only a3 it's doing like 15k per pop 45k a hit in total it's okay it's nothing nothing crazy the single target is actually kind of weak 52 53k on array three again it's okay but not, nothing special and um like 18 to 20k on her a1 okay let's get through to the boss okay so we come on to the boss then um I mean, what's nice, she gets a triple hit off. That's always good on Fire Knights. If you don't have many multi-hitters, she's going to help you out. She can help. Um, we get the decrease attack move. It was only a single hit, so that didn't go on. A1 can decrease turn meter. It's random, but it did happen there. So there's a chance for it to hit, and it actually enabled us to get that exhaustion out. So actually pretty clutch at that moment. A1 again didn't get any decreased turn meter that time, but again a double hit. Decreased defense hasn't come out from Draco, but she doesn't prioritize it. I wish that she did. She's prioritizing the poison and the decreased attack over decreased defense, um, which I don't know what you guys think. Decreased defense goes on there. It's a good ability. Um, so all in all, guys, she's offering a bunch of stuff in her kit. On Fire Knight, I think she's actually strong because because of her affinity, she's not going to be targeted. She brings a bunch of stuff, which is cool for the actual Fire Knight boss. Um, cool, but not crazy. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't go out of my way to kind of say she should be in your team. You know, she's not like a Cold Heart. She's not like an Armaga who's going to dramatically change this fight. But if you're struggling to get a decreased defense and weaken in there, along with some other okay utility and actually some pretty decent damage then she can help you out she can help you out in this fight so that's fire knight um i think we just go in and see if she can do some work she's definitely not getting into arena teams guys it's never happening no chance she doesn't have what it takes to be in an arena team um i don't feel like she, unless you are struggling for a decrease defense and weaken champion on a boss for faction wars which is which is actually pretty valuable then that's the only time she'd be coming into a faction war team for me but i guess she does bring actually i mean she's hitting quite hard here that's nice let's have a quick look at the the faction you know so if you consider decreased defense and weaken champions um coronar who most people won't have Got a weakened on a long beard. I don't think any of these epics have got it. And then you've got a flesh terror, a flesh monger, sorry, decreased defense. So on a boss fight for faction wars, she can actually do some work. Decreased defense and weaken in one ability. Poisons always good on boss fights. Decreased attack reduces their damage. So for boss fight faction wars, she's actually going to come in and do quite a bit. But she's hard to keep alive. So. You know, there's a, that's that's the kind of negative of it. Um, so in other dungeons, then in spiders, if you do again, if you don't have a decrease um, defense and weaken champion like this, then she can come in. She's the neutral affinity for spider. If you do not build her with high HP, she will be targeted, and she will die very quickly. In this build here, though, and again, she does that poison and decrease attack as a priority. We actually want her to do her decreased defense and weaken so that that's not a wasted hit that hit would have hit for like way down here if um if it had gone on the right ability there that hit would have probably killed the, the spider as well didn't land the decreased defense just for for a resist but got the weaken out but she can come in and do this role she can come in and just do a single target decreased defense and weaken uh quite nicely and then the rest of her kit is just okay you know, if she gets a little bit of turn meter drop, great. If she doesn't, then, you know, what are you going to do? Um, but you can see here, like, the big b bad boy moves were wasted, basically, because she did this instead of decrease defense and weaken, which is not ideal. Um, and if I was to run that on manual in the way that I'd like it to be played, then I think we do this. I think we do it. I take auto off. So if I was to run decrease defense and weaken here, 
on that triple hit. And then we play the slams. That's some damage right there. <laughs> that is some damage. Then you see we've done it comfortably. So the AI is a little bit wonky for me. The AI is a bit wonky. Uh, but she can do that job. You know, if you run a macro, she'll do it easier. Um, if you're running, I don't know, a couple of cold hearts. Cold hearts always do their A2 as their natural as well. So it kind of will sink in. But yeah, just a little bit wonky for me. A spider, but not terrible. Ice golems. I mean, she's again a neutral affinity. But quite frankly, unless you don't have a decreased defense AoE, I wouldn't be running her there. She's not for that. And Dragon, she's actually the weak affinity, um, which means she's going to be targeted. But let's just... But she will bring poisons, decreased attack, decreased defense, and weaken for the Dragon. If you can get her to the Dragon, then she's actually pretty good for that. You know, for finishing off the Dragon, she'll bring a bunch of stuff. You might need to bring a Revive Champion in if you've got one. Or you might need to bring another Spirit Affinity Champion that can take a hit into the fight. Because she will not. She will not take the hit. Um, so you might need someone like a Decreased Defense Stagnite, perhaps, even though he's going to get weak hits off, and build him like a, a tanky build. Um, so maybe if we did something like this. Try this. Um, but again, so only for the boss part of the fight does she really bring much in the way of the sort of damage and utility that you want. So obviously you've got a ton of weak hits off there. Is he even built? That's a question I'm not sure actually. So yeah, bringing in another spirit affinity. So in the end you have two spirit affinities to be able to deal with this and it's just not ideal. It's not ideal to have two spirit affinities. She's actually taking the pain anyway. She's taking it pretty well. So far, taken two hits. Decreased defense actually doesn't do a lot to her anyway because she's got very little defense. Um, I'll whiz it through to the boss part and then we'll see what she does there. Well, I don't know how well geared everyone else is, to be fair, and they might be badly geared. But um, I've, they probably are badly geared looking at some of the damage we're doing and stuff. But she's died about five times. Like If, if we did not have the revive champion in here, then there's absolutely no way she's getting us to the boss. And that's, um, you know, I, th I think for most people, that's a reality. You know, she's going to be the negative affinity. So she's going to be in trouble on this fight. She got a weak hit there. So she didn't get a decreased attack and her poisons off. Obviously, she doesn't drop turn meter anyway. Not on dragon. Doesn't work. So now we're relying on. Got weak hits there again. I don't know if that was a decreased defense and weaken attack i think it was got one poison out one decrease attack out so yeah so for level 20 she's just going to be too inconsistent because of the affinity um so if you're working your way up through dragon and you want someone to kill the boss i think she'll have have a chance um we've got a weaken out there but for 20 she's just not strong enough she's not strong enough so look guys easily the best place for her is in that type of unkillable team um she can do a bit of work in Finite. She can do a job in Spider. Um, but she's incredibly difficult to build and keep her consistently alive. Um, for me, she's like a mid-tier champion. I've added her to my tier list. Um, and in my tier list, she's come in like literally middle of the epics. I've scored her. I've scored her a, a 5 for Clan Boss. I've scored her a 3 for Dragon, mainly because of that affinity. Four for Spider, two for Ice Golem, four for Finite, and then two and two for um, for Arena. So coming in at 59 out of 130 odds epics. Okay, she's okay. She's certainly not what we all thought she was going to be. Um, she's dead again. So yeah, I don't know, guys. She's definitely not someone that I would say go out of your way to level up and get into the game unless you're running that unkillable style team that I've shown in this video. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I've been Hell Hades. I'll catch you later.